And today we have something really exciting. We have our favorite guest, Ms. Eric Cat, the founder of the Pet Education Project, or PEP for short. Today is, she is going to be talking to us about the five steps to a happy and to having a health a happy and healthy pet. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Great, I'm so excited. Well, I'm the founder of the Pet Education Project, and if you do not know what PEP is, we are here to teach you guys all about taking care of your pets because we believe that all pets deserve to live a happy, healthy life. Do you guys believe that all pets deserve to live a happy and healthy life? Yes! yes. Okay, boys and girls, I would love to see your paws up if you have a pet, okay, especially a kitty cat. Who has kitty cats here? Because it is Global Cat Day. Okay, and raise your paw if you have a dog. Let me see those paws up. Wonderful. There are so many wonderful pets for you to have, huh? Well, you know, all animals have feelings just like you and I, right? Okay, we have different kinds of feelings, like sometimes we get hungry, huh? Yeah, do you believe our animals get hungry too? Yes. yes. Just like you do. What about thirsty? I get thirsty. Do you think your pets get thirsty too? Yes. yes, they do. And what about in the winter time? Do they get cold? Yes. Yes, our pets do get cold, okay? And what about in the summertime? Do you guys get really hot? Yes. yes. And do you believe that animals get hot too? Yes. Oh, yes, especially with those big fur coats. They get really, really warm. Now, what about you guys? Do you guys get bored sometimes? Yes. Oh, yeah. And do you think our animals and our furry friends get bored too? Yes. yes. And you know what? Our furry friends don't watch TV. No. So we need to play with our pets every single day. You know, our pets have all these same feelings as us, but they actually are a lot different than us. Some of the biggest differences between us and animals is they can't talk. They can't tell us if they're hungry or if they're too hot or if they're too cold or if they're thirsty or maybe if they don't feel well, right? They can't say those things. So we have to be their eyes and their ears and watch out for our pets every single day. So today, boys and girls, I'm gonna be talking to you about the five steps to a happy and healthy pet. Now we have some of you holding our signs right there. So let's go ahead and talk about our first step to a happy and healthy pet. And that one is food. Can you guys all say food? That is awesome, great job, okay? So we know that dogs eat dog food, cats eat cat food, but what are some foods that may make your pet sick? Do you know what kind of foods may make your pet sick? Hmm, do you know something? Chocolate. Chocolate, great job. Chocolate is really bad for your pets. It can give them a tummy ache, and we don't want our pets to have a tummy ache, do we? No, okay. Yeah, and there are certain fruits that you may like to eat, but our pets should not eat them, like grapes and raisins. They can be really bad for your pets. So do not give your pets grapes and raisins, please. Now, after our pets may eat a big meal, they may get a little thirsty, right? So that's gonna be our second step to a happy and healthy pet. Boys and girls, can you say the word water? Water! Awesome, great job. You know, another big difference between us and animals is they don't have thumbs, so they can't pick up the water bowl and walk it over to the sink and pour a fresh bowl of water. Can they do that? No. No, okay. Who's supposed to change their water bowls? You. You, you and you and you and you. All of you are supposed to help take care of your pets. So I'm going to give you all a challenge, okay? So I want you, before you go to school, to check on your pet's water bowl and pour a big fresh bowl of water. And then when you get home from school, can you pour a second bowl of water? Can you guys do that for me? Yes! yes. That is so cool. Thank you so much. All right, so we talked about food. We've talked about water. And oh, after I eat a big meal, I sometimes get a little sleepy. And you know where I like to go to sleep? in your bed. So our third step is going to be shelter. Can you guys say shelter? Shelter! Very good. Okay, boys and girls, how many of you sleep outside underneath a tree? <gasps> Nobody, right? So do you think our pets like to sleep outside under a tree? No. no! Our pets want to sleep inside on a warm bed, okay? So that's important if your pets do live outside for them to have a dog house, okay? 
A dog house just looks like a human house with a roof and sides and a door. But on the inside, you can put comfy and cozy things like a bed and toys. But also, you should definitely put straw or hay if your pet always lives outside. And another thing with shelter boys and girls, we want your pets to stay close to home, okay? So make sure that they wear a collar and tags in case they go missing. Because remember, our pets can't talk. And they can't say, hey, I'm missing and I live here, right? So make sure your pets always wear a collar and tags. But another way to make sure your, if your pet goes missing and so that you can find them is something called a microchip. Can you say microchip? Microchip. Awesome. A microchip is teeny tiny. It's the size of a grain of rice. And they put it in the back of your pet's neck. So if they go missing and someone finds it, they just take your pet to the vet or the animal shelter and they scan the back of their neck with the computer and it shows up where your pets live. How cool is that, huh? That's really neat. Now, we've talked about food, we've talked about water, we've talked about shelter, and our next step is care. Can you guys say care? Care! Awesome. Where do you go when you're hurt or sick? Doctor. The, doctor. the doctor. And where do your pets go when you, they are hurt or sick? Vet. To the vet. Oh my goodness, you boys and girls are so smart. Yeah, so our pets can get sick just like you and I. So it's important to take your pets to the vet at least once a year for them to get things like shots. Yeah, do you get booster shots sometimes? Yeah. Yes. So our vets are there to help keep our, help, our pets healthy and happy. So they can do things like shots and they can give them lots of medicines and things like that to prevent against fleas and ticks because you don't want fleas and ticks jumping all over you and biting you, right? No, okay? You know, our pets can get really sick sometimes, so that's why it's important to bring them to the vet at least once a year. Now, we talked about food. Can you guys say food? Food! Can you guys say water? Water! Can you say shelter? Shelter! Can you say care? Care! And our last step, and it's my favorite step, is love. Can you guys say love? Love! Awesome! Well, you know, your pets love you so much. They want to be your best friend in the whole entire world. And when you get home from school, what do your pets do? Jump on. They're jumping and they're wagging their tail and they're barking and they're meowing. They just love you so much. So it's so important that we go and play with our pets every day and show them lots of love and attention. My favorite way to show my pets how, that I love them is to give them a belly rub, a hug, a kiss, and to tell them that I love them. You can play with your pets every day and show them that you love them too.